At the far western edge of Europe, where the Atlantic breaks against cliffs and fog rolls in from the sea, lies a region most people think they already understand. Rural, Celtic, Spanish, peripheral. But when geneticists mapped Europe, this place refused to behave. Again and again, Galicia failed to cluster where it should. Not fully Iberian, not Mediterranean, pulled instead toward Atlantic France, Ireland, even parts of Britain. The data kept disagreeing with the map. Then came the shock. Modern whole genome studies uncovered a significant North African and Middle Eastern genetic layer in Galicia. Not from the famous invasions everyone points to, not after 711, but centuries earlier, and almost entirely through men. No chronicles mention it, no monuments explain it, yet the DNA is still here. So the question is no longer, who conquered Galicia? The question is, why this land keeps remembering people history forgot? If you're interested in how genetics quietly rewrites the past, subscribe to Stone and Bone. This channel exists to follow the evidence, even when it leads somewhere uncomfortable. And before we go any further, tell me in the comments where you think Galicia truly belongs. Iberian, Atlantic, or something else entirely. When researchers compare populations, they don't start with flags or borders. They start with patterns, shared segments, statistical clustering. And on those charts, Galicia keeps drifting away from where Spain is supposed to be. It does not sit cleanly with central Iberia. It does not align neatly with the Mediterranean coast. Instead, it leans north and west, pulled toward Atlantic France and the British Isles. This isn't a cultural impression. It's a repeated outcome across independent genetic models. That makes Galicia a problem case. Because if Iberia was shaped by waves of replacement from the south and east, this region should reflect that clearly. Instead, it looks layered, selective. As if some movements pass through lightly, while others barely touched it at all. This is where simple invasion stories begin to fail. If you've seen ancestry tests or maps that divide Europe into clean blocks, keep this in mind. Galicia is what happens when human history refuses to stay tidy. To understand why Galicia behaves this way, you have to go back far earlier than kingdoms or languages. During the coldest phase of the last ice age, much of Europe became uninhabitable. Ice sheets advanced, game disappeared, human populations collapsed or fled south. But along the Atlantic fringe of northern Iberia, conditions stayed just stable enough for survival. This region formed part of what researchers call the Franco-Cantabrian Refuge, one of the few places where human groups endured while much of Europe emptied out. Their genetic legacy did not vanish. Maternal lineages passed from mother to child, especially those linked to Ice Age hunter-gatherers, remain unusually common here. That does not mean Galicia is frozen in time. It means something survived when elsewhere it did not. These people lived by the coast. They fished, gathered, and moved through a landscape shaped more by the ocean than by open plains. Over thousands of years, that continuity mattered, and it set the conditions for everything that followed. Around 5,500 BC, farming reached Iberia. New people arrived with wheat, domesticated animals, pottery, and a radically different way of life. In many parts of Europe, this transition came with dramatic population replacement. Galicia was different. Here, farming spread without fully wiping out the earlier inhabitants. Genetic evidence shows mixing rather than erasure. The newcomers blended with local groups instead of displacing them. Older lineages remained visible, especially along maternal lines. Geography played a role. Galicia's rugged terrain and Atlantic economy did not favor rapid agricultural expansion on the same scale as river valleys or open plains. The result was slower change and deeper continuity. This matters more than it sounds like it should. Because it means Galicia entered later periods not as a blank slate, but as a population already shaped by survival, adaptation, and resistance to total replacement. If you're starting to see a pattern forming here, pause for a moment. Let me know in the comments if this looks like isolation to you, or something more deliberate. For thousands of years, Galicia absorbed change without breaking. Then, around 2500 BC, that balance ended. Across Iberia, the Bronze Age brought one of the most dramatic demographic shifts ever recorded in ancient DNA. This was not a subtle blending. It was a collapse and replacement of male lineages on a massive scale. In Galicia, almost all earlier paternal lines disappeared. 
In their place rose a single dominant lineage, R1B, M269. And within Galicia itself, one branch became overwhelming, DF27. This mattered more than pottery or metalwork. It meant that, for the first time, Galicia's population structure was decisively reshaped by incoming men, taller on average, carrying step-related ancestry, bringing new social hierarchies and new forms of power. Yet even here, Galicia diverged. Instead of following the same path as Central Europe, it locked into its own branch. DF-27 did not arrive fully formed from elsewhere. It crystallized inside Iberia during the Bronze Age. Before Celtic languages ever reached the Atlantic, the genetic foundation of Atlantic Europe was already in place. By around 900 BC, Galicia entered the Iron Age. Hilltops filled with castros, stone walls circled round houses, iron tools, weapons, and swirling geometric designs spread across the landscape. This looks Celtic, and culturally, it was. But genetically, something important did not happen. There is no evidence for a large influx of people from Central Europe during this period. The paternal line that dominated Galicia in the Bronze Age still dominated now. DF-27 did not get replaced by newcomers from Hallstatt or Laten regions. This means Celtic culture in Galicia did not arrive through invasion. It spread through Atlantic networks, trade, shared symbols, elite connections moving along the coast from Iberia to Brittany to Ireland. Culture moved faster than people. This is where Galicia quietly dismantles one of Europe's most popular historical myths. Celtic identity did not require mass migration. It could emerge locally, rooted in populations that had already been there for centuries. If you think culture can only spread when people move, this part should bother you. Tell me in the comments whether this changes how you think about ancient identities. When Rome arrived in Galicia in the 2nd century BC, it brought roads, administration, law, and Latin. Cities grew, local elites adapted. Over time, Latin evolved into the language spoken there today. But genetically, Rome barely moved the needle. Whole genome studies show limited Italian or Eastern Mediterranean input. The empire ruled, taxed, and reorganized the region without replacing its people. Power changed hands. Bloodlines largely did not. The same pattern repeated centuries later with the Suebi, a Germanic group that established a kingdom in Galicia during the 5th century AD. Their cultural footprint was visible in law codes and early Christian structures. Their genetic footprint was small. Once again, Galicia absorbed an empire without being overwritten by it. Then comes the part no one expects. Modern whole genome analysis revealed a substantial North African and Middle Eastern genetic component in Galicia. Around 13 to 16 percent of the autosomal ancestry and it did not arrive during the Islamic conquest. Genetic dating places this mixture roughly between AD 620 and 670, earlier than the armies everyone points to. Even more striking is how it arrived. The signal is overwhelmingly male. About one-fifth of Galician paternal lines trace back to North African or Middle Eastern origins. Maternal lines barely register it at all. Men arrived, women did not. There are no clear historical records describing this movement, no monuments, no sudden cultural shift. Possible explanations range from mercenary recruitment and military service to long-distance Atlantic trade networks and maritime labor. Whatever the mechanism, the result is clear. Galicia remembers a migration its written history forgot. If this caught you off guard, say so in the comments. Most people never hear this part of the story. Galicia forces an uncomfortable conclusion. Europe was not shaped by neat waves that erased what came before. It was shaped by survival, resistance, and selective change. Some people vanished, others stayed, some lineages collapsed. Others endured quietly for thousands of years. In Galicia, Ice Age ancestry did not disappear. Neolithic farmers arrived, but they did not reset the population. Bronze Age newcomers transformed the male line without replacing everyone. Celtic culture spread without mass migration. Empires ruled without rewriting the gene pool. This is not a regional curiosity. It is a warning. If one Atlantic corner preserves this many layers, then Europe's past is far messier than our timelines admit. 
Genetics does not support simple origin stories. It exposes accumulation. And once you see that, you can't unsee it. Written history favors rulers, borders, and victories. DNA does not. Galicia remembers people who left no chronicles, men who arrived without monuments, communities that adapted instead of disappearing, movements that never became legends but still reshaped ancestry. This is why Galicia looks ordinary on the surface and extraordinary underneath. Its past was not loud enough to dominate textbooks, but it was persistent enough to survive. If this story changed how you think about European history, say so in the comments. Not agreement, just honesty. These conversations matter more than tidy conclusions. Galicia is not the edge of Europe. It is a record of how Europe actually formed. Not through constant replacement, but through layers that stayed visible, through cultures that moved faster than people, through migrations that left genetic scars without cultural memory. This is what happens when you follow evidence instead of myths. If you want more stories like this, grounded in genetics, archaeology, and uncomfortable data, subscribe to Stone and Bone. This channel exists to go where simple narratives break down. And tell me below, which region should we take apart next?